In this tutorial, we will use the Timeline Effects Editor to create a simple explosion from scratch. We'll begin by going to the File menu and selecting Import Shape, where I have two shapes ready to be imported, a glow shape and a smoke shape. Once they have imported, we can create a new effect by right-clicking the smoke shape and selecting Create Effect from Shape from the pop-up menu. This will add a new effect and emitter to the library, and our smoke shape will be automatically assigned to the emitter. Let's rename our new effect and emitter, Explosion and Smoke, respectively. Now let's change the colour of the smoke particle. By default, the colour is set to white, but for smoke, let's change this to a dark grey. Right click on the colour notch and select Edit, and then select a dark grey using the colour dialog. Now it's time to make use of the emitter attributes, so we can adjust various aspects of the particle's behaviour. Let's start by changing the size. Select Size from the list of attributes, which will automatically switch to the Graph tab. Click and drag the first node on the graph down to about 60. This will make all particles spawn 60 pixels wide. Then select Size Variation and drag the node up to about 40. This will make the particles vary in size by 40 pixels. You also need to change the amount of particles that are spawned every second, so select Amount and drag the node up to about 150. Now that more particles are being spawned, we can see that we have the wrong blend mode for this smoke emitter, so select the Particle tab and untick the Additive checkbox to stop the particles looking so intense. Now let's make the particles grow in size over their lifetime. Select Size over Time from the Attribute list and drag the first node to zero. Now every particle that spawns will have no size, so create a second node on the graph by clicking and dragging and move the new node to 1 on the x-axis and one on the y-axis. This means that over the duration of the particle's life, it will grow from zero to 100% of its base size of 60 pixels, which we set earlier using the size attribute. You can see the result in the preview window. To create our explosion effect, we need to make the particles explode out from the center of the effect. To do that, we need to set the velocity, velocity variation, and velocity over time attributes. Start by selecting the Velocity attribute and drag the node up to about 320. Then select Velocity Variation and drag the node up to about 120. Finally, select the Velocity over Time attribute and drag the first node to 1. Our particles now have velocity, but we need to make them decelerate over time. Create a second node on the graph and drag it to zero at the end of the particle's life. Now our particles decelerate over time, but it's still too much for this effect. Fix it by creating a third node and drag it to about 0.25 on the x-axis and about 0.05 on the y-axis. To finish off, right-click the node and select Curve to turn it into a curved node so that the deceleration is not as linear. Currently our particles are only travelling one direction. For an explosion effect, we need them to travel in every direction. So select the explosion effect in the list of effects, then select emission range and drag the node all the way to the top. Now the particles travel in a random direction away from the centre of the effect. The next thing we can change is the alpha over time of the particles. Currently when the particles die, they simply disappear. Make sure the smoke emitter is selected, then select the alpha over time graph, create a new node on the graph and drag it to zero at the end of the particle's life. I think the particles currently have a little too much velocity, so let's quickly adjust that now. So currently we have a continuous stream of particles being created, but for an explosion effect, we just want a quick burst. We'll create two new nodes on the amount graph, one at just under one second with the same amount, and another node also just under one second, but set to zero. Now the emitter spawns a number of particles for just under a second and then stops. One final thing I want to tweak is the angle of each particle. Currently the angle is set to align itself with the emission angle, but the particle shape looks better with the set angle. Click on the particle tab and select specify under the angle settings, then type minus 45 into the text field. Now let's create an emitter to give our explosion some fire. We can do this by copying the smoke emitter. Right click the smoke emitter and select clone to make a copy. Rename our copy fire. Next change the colour. 
edit the colour notch in the particle tab and select an orange colour. Then check the additive checkbox to make the particles look more intense. To see the whole effect, select the explosion effect in the effects list. We've still got some tweaking to do to make it look right. Make sure the fire emitter is selected and select the amount attribute. Drag the second and third nodes back a bit so that the fire emitter stops spawning particles before the smoke emitter. We also want the fire to travel less of a distance, so select the velocity over time attribute and drag the first node down to about 0.35 or so. Our fire is now complete. Click the explosion effect again and see how the effect looks. To finish the effect off, let's create a glow emitter using the flare shape we imported earlier. Right click the explosion effect and select create emitter. Then select the new emitter, right click on the flare shape and select assign shape. We can rename the emitter glow. Go onto the particle tab and change the colour of the particle to orange. Then select the amount attribute and drag the first node up a little. Then create a second node and drag it to zero at about a third of a second on the x-axis. Let's make it fade in and fade out again using the alpha graph. Drag the first node to zero, create a second node and drag it to one at about 20% of the particle's life. Then create a third node and drag it to zero at the end of the particle's life. This will make the particles fade smoothly in and out. Finally, let's reduce the life of the particles. Select the life attribute and drag the node down to about 750. This will make the particles last 750 milliseconds or 0.75 seconds. And that's our basic explosion effect complete.